we're going live. I think we are live. Yo, yo, yo. Tell me what you know. Welcome to the Sunshine Show. Woo! You guys, I have an amazing guest for y'all tonight, today, this evening, this morning, wherever you guys may roam. I have the one and only, the most fabulous, the most phenomenal, the most Bowie of them all, Becky Baldwin in the house. Yo, Becky, how's it going? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Good, thank you so much. And thank you so much for being here with us this afternoon um, or this evening for you. Um, we appreciate your time. And I know I've been wanting to talk to you for quite some time now. So I'm super excited about this interview. Yes, yeah, I can't <laughs> wait to do this. This is cool. So what's been going on? What have you been up to today? Um, I had some students today, um, some of my base students. Uh, I also had a lesson because uh, uh, I've been learning, uh, I mean, taking singing lessons. So I'm the student again, which is a, a bit different to, yeah, go from like tutor to uh, student that doesn't know anything. <laughs> uh, but, you know, it, 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 it's nice and it's nice to progress at something different and new so yeah and i've just been packing up orders for my band's new album um getting them posted out as soon as possible just when i think they're all done there's more coming in um not a bad not a problem to have that but uh yeah it's great <laughs> very cool um let's use the chat we got don mcdaniel we got mar hill we got Marcio, we got people from all over the world tuning in thank you guys so much if you have questions for becky drop them in the comments we will get to them asap um, so Becky, for those who may not know who you are, can you give um, us a little bit of an introduction? Uh, so I am a bass player from Birmingham in the UK, and I play bass for a metal band called Fury. We play kind of classic heavy metal, like kind of heavy, maybe thrashy and a bit of, uh, I don't know, a bit of everything in, in the last album, but yeah, definitely like classic metal. Um, my other band is a grunge band called Hands Off Gretel, and that's more like, yeah, grunge punk kind of thing. Um, and I have like a online presence, basically, uh, Instagram, and uh, I do a Patreon uh, where I just like record bass videos and uh, sometimes teach some bass lessons on there. Uh, and that, that's about it, really. Awesome. Very cool. So how's the Patreon been going? Has that been pretty easy to figure out? Um, it, yeah, I think like in terms of setting it up, it was actually pretty easy. I was a bit daunted by it. Like it was something that I had seen so many other artists doing and I was like, oh, that's such a cool idea because I think so many people these days are not collecting things as they used to. They're, they don't need to buy every CD because they're using like streaming sites. They're not buying every t-shirt because their, their closets are full like this. Um, so th they want to support the bands, but they don't really need all of the stuff filling their house. So it's just another way for people to support artists. And uh, when the lockdown started to hit, I was like, right, this is the time. It's now or never. Like, I need this now. Um, so might as well give it a go, see if it works. And yeah, it, it did work. And uh, to the point that when and gig started up again I didn't want to stop because uh, <laughs> I you know I built such a nice community so now it's just a case of uh, juggling the work with uh, Patreon trying to st stay connected with those fans while also being on the road again which is uh, a bit full-on but uh, I'm glad to have it it's been a real lifeline through through the last two years basically sure so that's awesome that you're able to have all those different ways to connect to your fans um and so through like the rough times we're able to like find really good things um which is a really awesome and anybody who wants to connect with becky get on that patreon how do we just look up becky baldwin base yeah becky baldwin base uh yeah search it on the patreon uh, website and uh, i'll come up perfect i will drop that in the comments you guys so we got leaf arrow we got megan in the house we got jesse we got mama can too we got dave we got juliana we got so many people here the first question we have for you becky what are your three favorite brit-based metal bands oh ooh, just british okay uh well definitely my favorite metal band of all time is black sabbath um so okay and i guess motorhead would have to be another one uh i guess those are quite obvious <laughs> um <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I guess a lot of my other uh, big, uh, my favorite bands are a lot of them are American. Um, I guess Iron Maiden would probably be number three. 
Okay, perfect. So I guess we would, is it safe to assume that heavy metal and rock are your favorite genres of music to play? Yes, yeah, it's definitely what I grew up uh, listening to and what made me want to start playing the bass. I think more recently, I got into more like punk, riot girl, grunge and stuff like that. But it's always, I, I don't know, when, whenever I'm around people who like metal or around uh, metal gigs and festivals, it's where I feel most at home. And I, I know where I am when I'm like listening to metal bands and talking about that kind of thing. So um, yeah, it's, it's not the only thing I listen to, but it's definitely, yeah, where I feel at home. And tell me what goes into your stage show. Um, uh, so the, the, the show that I've been, uh, going to be touring this year is with Fury because we've just released an album. Um, it's, it's very fast and heavy most of the time, but to be honest, we, we've been, uh, experimenting with ballads. <laughs> we've got, um, pretty much one ballad on every album because, uh, I don't know, like it divides opinion a lot, but I think when people get to the show and they're listening to all this like fast heavy music it's nice to have a little break towards the end just as a bit of a you know a palate cleanser you, you're just ready for some more afterwards so um you know that there's a lot of variety going on um big drum solo to come out of it and we started working with uh, backing vocalists as well because so we were just a four piece for a really long time and then we started bringing in uh, uh naya who's a, a backing vocalist who started recording on our previous album and now, and then we wanted, then the lockdown hit, right? Sure. And because everyone was pretty available, whenever we did have an opportunity to do something like a live stream, we were like, well, everyone's free. Like, let's just bring Naya. Let's also bring Jade, this other girl we started using for backing vocals as well. And we'll live stream with these extra vocalists. So then we started working on older songs and stacking the harmonies and stuff like this and just getting really carried away. So that by the time we started gigging again, we were like, ah, oh, we've become a six piece band pretty much. So that wasn't really the plan. It was just like, <laughs> yeah, we got carried away in lockdown. We were like, we could add a harmony. We can bring people to gigs because nobody's doing anything. Um, and now everyone's doing everything. It's very difficult to, you know, make sure everyone's available. So we're kind of in a situation where we've got like an adaptable lineup. Sometimes we'll appear as six if it's like a big festival and everyone's free or sometimes we can go out as a four piece if we need to. Oh, that's awesome. I think it's okay. the way to go really with everyone being so busy and everything going up in the air like during COVID and then, you know, people start different kinds of works, different uh, things they do and then you come back to it and realize the whole climate is different to how it was before. Yeah, it, yeah, absolutely. Um, so Juliana is asking, will any of your bands have any dates in the United States at any point in the future? Uh, I mean, I'd really like to. Um, sadly, we don't really have, we, we've never played in the US before and it's looking really hard for UK bands to play over there at the moment. Um, just, you know, trying to figure out visas and that whole situation. But I mean, it's what we really want to do. So maybe next year, if, if like, everything kicks off with this new album and uh you know there's a hu huge demand for it then maybe we could tour in the u.s in the next few years but uh yeah nothing planned at the moment unfortunately all right guys we got to start that petition and get it out so we can get back <laughs> into the states y'all uh yes, tell your friends. <laughs> we got dave and we got jaybird in the chat one wants to know about your gear the other one wants to know about your preferred bass strings uh, so the bass strings I use are uh, Diodario NYXL bass strings. Um, uh, the gauge is 45 to 125 on the four strings. Um, and so my bass is, my favorite bass is the uh, 4001 Rickenbacker, um, which is the same as what you've got. Mine's uh, 1977. What year is yours? Mine is a 75. 75? So oh, nice. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, the, the white Rickenbacker is, is definitely my favorite. Um, I've also got a black one, which is a 4003. Um, so you know, most of my touring is, I'd like it to be with those, but I also uh, need a five string bass sometimes. So I use my Fender uh, Deluxe uh, V um, for a lot of the shows and I use dark glass amplification and their effects pedals and stuff. Very cool. Uh, Jaybird wants to know, does your amp turn up to 11? Uh, 
I mean, I, I, it's as good as 11. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and Weed says that he likes his bass strings dead, just like his soul. Okay, that's good to know, Weed. <laughs> that's really good. Like, I don't know. I wish I enjoyed that um, <laughs> that kind of sound. It would make things a lot easier and cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Leaf wants to know, do you have a favorite tea? A tea? Oh, um, English breakfast tea. It's got, I don't know. Like, I, over here, it's just tea. You know, like you just if you someone says I'd like some tea, it's just your bog standard tea. Everyone drinks the same tea. You have to be very specific if you want a different flavor tea, like if you want peppermint or lemon or something. Um, oh, so okay. I, I, I will just have anything really. Like I think people often say Yorkshireman tea. I think that's the that's the that's the standard. But really, I will drink any tea. I think it's all good. Nice. And so do you drink coffee? I don't drink coffee. No, no, I never got into it. Um, ugh. <laughs> so is that, do you think that's more of a United States kind of thing? Um, I mean, there, there are a lot of coffee drinkers over here. Um, but I, I do find like whenever I go somewhere, uh, yeah, into Europe and into United States, uh, people are like, yes, I need my coffee to do this. And it's just like, okay, <laughs> can I have some tea? <laughs> and then they like, they put some like milk and some shit in the microwave. And I'm like, ah, what are you doing? <laughs> As I drink my Starbucks yeah. coffee, uh, <laughs> I needed some energy, you guys. I needed some energy. Yeah. <laughs> um, so Becky, tell me a little bit about how you got into music, how you got into bass specifically. Um, go um, for it. So um, I guess music, I just always was into music uh, since I was a, a kid. I really liked musicals. I watched a lot of like, yeah, yeah, just like uh, I don't know, like cats, um, like Andrew Lloyd, Andrew Lloyd Webber stuff, and uh, I don't know. I just thought it was really cool, and I I was really into Michael Jackson when I was a child, and like I loved all of my parents' music. Uh, I loved like Bee Gees and ABBA, and I was so uncool, but <laughs> I d I loved music, and it just but it just wasn't really all of the kind of pop music that was uh, big at the time, and. Uh, and then, you know, it wasn't until I discovered like rock and metal when uh, we got like Sky TV and we had all the channels, we had the music channels and I was like, oh my God, what is all this? And we saw the music videos and they were so like, like kind of like scary and, and stuff. And I think uh, one of the first like kind of rock artists I got into was Alice Cooper um, because I, I don't know, there's something about like the, I was also really into horror films and stuff and there's something be um, between bringing like hard rock music and, mm -hmm. and horror together, which I thought was really cool. Um, that is really, that is really cool. <laughs> yeah, it, it just works together. And I think as always, I was always a bit of a weirdo. <laughs> it kind of, then I was like, oh, I found my people now. Th these are the weirdos that I want to hang out with because they like music, they like horror movies, uh, and they are okay with being weird and having no friends. And I'm like, oh, this is great. <laughs> and then you end up making lots of friends because everyone's weird. <laughs> yes, yes. That is awesome. Um, okay, so you like the musicals, you, you were into your parents' music, and then when did you actually pick up the bass? Um, so that was when um, some of my weird friends at school started playing guitar. Um, and I was like, yes, I want to join in, but um, I don't really want to copy you. Like everyone wants to play guitar when they're like 12, 13. And I was like, okay, I, I got to do something slightly different, I suppose, because I, I want to be in your band. Uh, so they were like, why don't you try bass then? And I'm like, yeah, sure, cool. Yep, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> And then, you know, once I picked up the bass and I was like, oh, yeah, this is great. Like, this is a massive thing. Cool. And uh, then I started to notice other bass players, because I think before you really understand the difference between bass and guitar, you just look at them like, yeah, they're all guitars. Great. Um, but then when you understand what the bass is and you start being like, oh, yeah, that's the bass player. And you're like, that is a cool guy. That is the coolest person in the band by like a mile. Yes. And, and then, yeah, then you're so into it because you're like, yeah, they got a cool stance. They're like, they got some kind of attitude and energy. And then you're like, yeah, that's me. I, I can do this. <laughs> Very cool. So were you guys like, was your first band a cover band? Or you, were you guys like into like already writing original music? Oh uh, yeah, we, we were trying to like write our own music mostly because 
uh, we'd all want to rec- like cover different songs and we just couldn't agree. <laughs> there were some songs that, you know, we all liked. We all wanted to do like um, uh, Pink Floyd and Red Hot Chili Peppers and stuff like that. But um, we couldn't all play that well. And, some, and you know, I, I started going like, way like i only want to play slayer and like if it's not that heavy then i don't want to play it. i started getting a bit like crazy <laughs> yeah. and so we were like yeah let's write our own stuff and um yeah so we you know we were trying to write stuff from from the very beginning and um I, yeah i don't that was like a, a girl band that i had with um back at school when i was like yeah 14 and stuff <laughs> but i've always played with oh my God. In, in, in bands <laughs> That is amazing. And that is like my ultimate goal is to have an all female crew of musicians, but it just seems so hard sometimes and so daunting. I mean, but really any band takes a lot, a lot of work. Right. Yeah. Um, but for some reason, it's just hard for me to find all the right female musicians, but I know what's going to happen and you are keeping me inspired woman. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I oh, know. Yeah. I know it can be done. Um, so Jesse has a comment. She says, Alice Cooper's kids are now keeping it weird and carrying the torch. Awesome. <laughs> uh, Weege says, okay, metal and horror films. What do you think about Rob Zombie making a Munsters film? Is the Munsters a very American thing? Um, I think it is. Yeah, like I don't don't know if it's translated as much over here the monsters um i you know and I, I kind of know what it is uh but it it i don't know i don't know if that many people watch it over here but um yeah no i think that sounds pretty cool i'll probably watch it i, I like to watch anything rob zombie brings out so i'll definitely look out for that very cool do you have a favorite horror soundtrack oh soundtrack i don't know um Oh, I don't know. To be honest, I don't know if I listen to many horrors just for the soundtrack. Uh, I'll have to think about that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and Weech says, can you say metal again one more time? He just loves your accent. Metal. Metal. <laughs> <laughs> okay, very cool. So we talked about your first band in high school. When did you start taking it more professionally? Um, I think I always wanted uh it to be very serious like um from when i was about 14 15 i you know my grades started dropping that was a thing <laughs> um i wanted to be a vet when i was like younger because i love animals and stuff and i was like yes i'll be a vet and i was really good at science i was really good at everything i was like total like nerd um and then i discovered rock music and playing bass then uh stopped being the top of the class at things um don't know because obviously a coincidence um <laughs> and then uh because i was really enjoying bass stuff i was like well forget being a vet i will be a rock star obviously it's going to be easy <laughs> i'm destined uh, for this so go ahead um yeah so uh yeah so from then on i just wanted to do that i thought i would just get like a part-time job or something and then uh do base as much as possible but then uh my dad recommended that i go study at this university that um it's like contemporary music and stuff and i was like yeah go on then and i'm so glad i did because i really thought i could make it um when when i was just like in my small town where i came from because i i didn't know that many other bass players and i was like well i'm better than those bass players i'll be the best like this i'm definitely gonna be a rock star um but then when i went to university and i saw these other musicians and i was like holy shit i am like so out of my depth here and i don't know what i'm doing and it was um you know just a shock but a really good learning curve and i learned so quickly um just from other people being around such good musicians and uh yeah i think if i hadn't have done that it would not have worked out well for me <laughs> but, well, you know, you have... sorry so you actually went and studied music for a few years yeah yeah so yeah i did three years um and got a degree in music and that you know just being able to meet people and be in a bigger city so in the small town i came from there wasn't much of a music scene but when i moved over there and uh met these people that was you know something you can really get your teeth into start networking there and uh, building something um in a bigger city which was very important i think wow so did you actually have like a base studies program at, at your school 
Yeah, so uh, we all studied, I think it was just like called professional musicianship and you can do it as a drummer, guitarist, uh, bass player, singer or a songwriter. That was the four, the five courses that were available at the time. Um, and, you know, the first like year you play loads of music and it's great. And then later on you do lots of essays and like kind of boring stuff and like, you know, studies of how to make bands work and, um, you know, all the legal stuff and uh, horrible stuff, but, uh, <laughs> but very useful. <laughs> it seems very beneficial. I feel like anybody who's in a band should definitely take these courses. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, you can get yourself in a right old pickle, like with uh, contracts and, and, you know, just not knowing where to go. Like people, I think, a lot of bands like to paint this image of how bands make it and it's usually not that accurate they'll be like yeah we did this show and then we got spotted by this person then suddenly overnight success like that is not how it works like they were definitely like grafting behind the scenes they probably got some help by someone by a bunch of people along the way and um you, you need that kind of environment and those people to help you and that knowledge to to get anywhere really unless if you're like i don't know super rich and can just buy your way onto like a, a record deal you need to do those kinds of things so yeah i think it's really important to really be honest about where how how you got to where you are now yeah for sure and so then after you graduated what was the first uh, what was the first band that you joined um, so I was in uh, a couple of bands, uh, some metal bands, um, uh, one called Triaxis, which was cool. It was like very similar to Fury, actually, kind of that old school Dio, that kind of thing uh, with a female vocalist. And uh, that, that was cool. We did an album with them. I was in a band called Control the Storm. That was more symphonic uh, power metal kind of stuff. And I was in an all girl punk band. Uh, punk band a uh, little three-piece thing and that was cool um and then function bands basically at one point i was in eight different bands and it was a lot to deal with <laughs> but, wow yeah it, how do you but, juggle that i mean I, I i couldn't for that long like i had to leave some but it was just uh, out of necessity uh just trying to get that working none of them were that busy at the time so it was just a case of like doing all of it until the point where it was like okay i can't commit to this anymore and then having to pick which uh which was best suited to me and which were doing the best really i guess you kind of just have to be a bit uh, i don't know not not selfish but like just aware of what you want from things and if it's not really what you want anymore to be able to be honest and say i, I can't commit anymore yeah and that is very hard sometimes for people to be honest because you want to do what's right for everybody and sometimes what is the best thing for you is what is best for you and not necessarily everybody around you and it's a hard a hard life lesson some people have to learn um yeah so sometimes we got to be selfish sometimes we got to be selfish uh so going back to the horror soundtrack really quick dave says that strange land and judgment night both have solid horror soundtracks um so you need to check them out okay yeah i'll, I'll look them up i don't actually know those films actually um, um and then jesse says pet cemetery has the cheesiest ramon song ever <laughs> oh yes yes that song always comes up on my spotify like I don't know it you know like the discover weekly thing where it's like here's some new music it gives me that like every single week i'm like i know i've heard it i've heard the ramones i've heard the ramones get over it. but no i do love that. i love that song but oh god it's just given it to me so many times sure uh so christopher wolf asks what year is your main rickenbacker base i know we already covered this but if you could uh say one more time oh, oh yeah so yeah the main one is 1977 1970s so before you were even born baby uh, yes <laughs> <laughs> um so awesome so then what band are you are you on tour now or about to hit the road uh we're just about to we've had a couple of shows but um we haven't got to the main bulk of the tour yet and when will that be happening uh so we start well we do one on friday and then uh then the following week the thursday we start and then we have a bunch of dates in a row um 
up until pretty much into May, then we kind of stop and then have a couple of festivals and stuff. So yeah, it's a very uh, busy year for Fury. So what would you say the key is to being successful and getting along when you're stuck in such small quarters with the same people for such a long period of time? Oh, huh. I don't know. I, I suppose it would be just trying to put yourself in the other person's position and, and trying to understand where they're coming from. Like, uh, and, and you know, just trying to understand that they may be going through things that you don't get. Like, what? Why are they being so short with me? That is it because something that I don't know. And yeah, just trying to give people the benefit of the doubt, really. And um, I, I don't know. Yeah, when, when you're together for a long time, you do need to just make sure you're being honest with each other and uh, just a bit more transparent. And try, I don't know. Yeah. Because I, I, I always feel like, oh my god, this person doesn't like me because they said this or like they've done this, and I know that that is something that I think, but isn't always reality. <laughs> so yeah, I just need to check myself and just be like, no, you're, you're jumping to conclusions. Like that's not what they've said. That's not what they meant at all. <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> and a lot of people are saying honesty is the key. Yes, honesty is the key. Yeah. We're yeah. We're, <laughs> we're gonna make sure was... and distribute them. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah um, there's people that if you explain like your what your what you know what your line of thinking they will understand your line of thinking and be like yeah if i was a, if i was you i'd do that so yeah i think it's all about being honest and then also um good hygiene is a big part of being able to stay on the road i guess because you are with a bunch of females you probably don't have to experience really awful body odor or things like that right yeah yeah actually yeah i've been pretty lucky most of the people i've toured with uh both men and women have been pretty good um we do like the actually the drummer of hands off gretel the grunge band he is a serial van farter and <laughs> but uh, for some reason we, we don't mind we get over it we, we just go oh sam and then open the window and then it's like <laughs> but uh, I, <laughs> I don't know. You just you just have to deal with people and 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 their quirks, I suppose. <laughs> sure, absolutely. Unfortunately, I'm always the one that has to share the hotel room with him, so it, it, there's no escape. There's no escape for me. I just have to, yeah, just get the fresh air when I can. <laughs> oh man, um, let's see who's in the chat really quick. We got a lot of fan bam here. Thank you guys all for hanging out. We got Mama Cantu, we got Weed, we got Dave, we got Enrique, we got Jaybird, we got um, so many people here. Thank you guys all. Christopher, Adam Phillips, we got Jesse Duran in the house. If you guys have any questions, drop them in the chat and we will get to them ASAP. David Taylor asks, hi, Becky, are you using your your new van on the Fury Tour? Have you given it a name yet? Um, I haven't actually given it a name yet, but no, I'm hoping that when we bring it on tour, someone will say something, something will come up and we'll be like, that is a new van name. Um, I was asking people for suggestions and, and I love something that's like, I love the uh, Van Helsing and that, you know, that kind of thing. Um, van morrison I, I love those kind of names but i don't know they they've, they've come up too much i want something a bit more like unique to to fury and i don't know to me or something um yeah so i i, I don't know i feel like something came up i really can't remember what it was like the the van winator or something i i, I don't know. <laughs> My I I uh, have, I had a van, it's a gladiator, and his name was Russell Crowe, because Russell Crowe plays the gladiator, so that was like a nice play off of that. Do you also uh, name your bass guitars? No, I don't. No, I haven't named any of them. Not for, not since I f first started playing. I think then I was naming, when I first started, I was naming the bass, basses after my favorite bass players, but wh whenever you get a new bass, and that's your new favorite, and then another favorite and you can't keep changing their names around that's a problem <laughs> uh we got a question what are your top three bass players uh i would say geezer butler from black sabbath and then cliff burton from metallica and then number three 
I would... Ooh, uh, maybe Chris Squire from Yes. Awesome. Very cool. Um, oh, Amelia, my best in Austin, Texas, she says Banner White's a good name for a, a tour bus, tour van. <laughs> what, what was that? Banner White. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> cool. <laughs> um, okay. Ben Harris, what's your studio rig, amp, et cetera? And is it different from your touring setup? Um, so uh, it's mostly, well, the same bass, obviously. And then. Um, I don't really use an amp when I'm recording. I'll usually go straight uh, DI in, so I'll just use my effects. At the moment, I've got the Dark Glass Photon pedal. That's what I'm going to be using now, both live and uh, recording. Um, I think on, on the Fury album, I was using a different Dark Glass pedal because uh, I didn't have the Photon yet. But uh, yeah, it's pretty much the same, it, but it's just going to go straight in. I, I don't really record with a mic'd up cab or anything like that. Okay. I'm mostly recording from home and can't be that loud <laughs> unfortunately sure. yeah so how does it work the songwriting process with uh fury so with fury our vocalist julian basically writes the the main idea of the song he'll come up with the riffs and um the top line and then uh, uh, again we'll start jamming stuff out um uh, we'll all kind of write our own parts and then at some point he'll come up with whatever will be the subject matter of the song and then yeah start working on the lyrics so um yeah most of the time we're kind of slightly later in the process of writing it we don't normally like get together and jam or anything like that we'll we'll jam when there's already uh some riffs established and that kind of thing then we'll just work together to get like the arrangement and the structure down okay are you guys all in the same area uh we are now yes yeah i moved up to birmingham to for one of the reasons was to be closer to them. Um, so yeah, so now we can rehearse a bit more often than we used to. Awesome. I know that a lot of people, sometimes they live very far apart. And so their main um, outlet is through, you know, recording it and sending it to each other, which is awesome. But I think there's something to be said about people that all live in an area and can actually get together. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I think recording is is great. Like especially uh, if you can demo um, your stuff before going into the studio, it's very uh, so useful. Um, we didn't really do that because we're not um, our vocalist isn't very uh, tech savvy. I mean, he's getting there. He's got he's got his new laptop now, so he's getting there. But hopefully, the next album we can do a few more demos and stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it, so it was just a case of like getting together a lot of the time. But, you know, during the pandemic, it was a bit more difficult to do that. Um, but, you know, I think any bands, they just figure out a way, they adapt and they work with whatever they can. Yeah, and that's uh, the important thing about being in a band is you have to be able to adapt. 100%. We got Megan Richardson. Hey, Megan. We got Paul from Colorado. Um, and we got Tommy Fam. We got so many family and friends in the chat, and we love you all. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments. Um, so you said that you have um, some students that you teach virtually. Um, how do you take care of all that when you're on the road? Do you just do your lessons from the bus? Oh, um, I, I, I may basically move the lessons around my touring. So um, we usually tour like weekends or maybe like wednesday to sunday so most of my lessons i fit into monday and tuesday and if i'm away for longer then i'll just kind of move them around so the, you know they're all luckily they're all quite flexible um with their time and yeah i mean i don't know i can't imagine doing it on the bus with uh people around and just trying to fit it into the day would be quite difficult i think because you know it, there's a lot of traveling involved we've got quite um I, i've just bought a van but it's it's just a small one um that we can travel in and just to get to the hotel and stuff so there's no like big overnight sleeper tour bus kind of thing um but you know maybe one day when that happens i can multitask like that <laughs> yeah absolutely um so if somebody wanted to take bass lessons from you, how would they get in touch with you to do that? Uh, they could just uh, email me. You can find my email address on my website. Uh, my website is beckybaldwinbass.com. 
Um, but yeah, you should be able to find my email address or like DM me on Instagram or anything. And hopefully we could uh, hook up with a bass lesson. Very cool. And do you have any like tips or tricks that you could share with um, us bass players that want to be able to play like Becky? Oh, uh, okay. Um, <laughs> um, to play like me. I don't know. I guess it would be to, I guess, work on uh, finger picking speed because, I mean, I guess for a lot of metal bass players, a lot of metal bass players use a plectrum and that is not really my thing. Um, I've, I've always played with fingers and I just got so used to it that I just couldn't really adapt <laughs> by that point. I was I'm too old now. I can't start learning with a pick. Um, <laughs> so yeah, just like trying to dig in a lot with fingers to try and replicate that pick sound um and just yeah learn to play pretty fast as fast as you possibly can <laughs> and um how many hours would you say you spend in a day on music on bass on your business on building your brand i think um definitely not enough on <laughs> on my base unfortunately um i've ended up in the kind of role where and you know the things that are just going on in my life where i do a lot of admin i do a lot of uh booking the band's gigs and uh like i, I sort out the orders i arrange the merch i store the merch i, I kind of uh i've become more of like a manager type of role <laughs> as well as bass player um so yeah unfortunately i don't do as much bass playing as i would like to um i guess you know i hopefully play my bass about like an hour or two a day if i'm lucky um but the rest of it is all emails and boring stuff like uh editing videos and making graphics on i mean it sounds it seems like you probably do a lot of the same like having to make posters for all these interviews and stuff which I don't know. I, I'm, I'm sure you enjoy them, but like it does kind of take away from your bass playing time, which is always sad. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, but it's got to be done. Somebody's got to absolutely. do it. Yeah. Uh, you can't, if you if you just play bass, you're just going to be there in your basement playing bass to yourself if you don't find a way to get out there. Exactly. Um, David Taylor says play fast and bounce around a lot. That is the Becky style. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I did forget that. You have to be very active on stage. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, so Paul, what's your favorite bass to play live? We already covered this. It was the Rickenbacker and then you have a Fender that you play too, right? Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. yeah. So the uh, Rickenbacker 4001 and then the Fender uh, Deluxe V is the other one. Awesome. So we were kind of talking about your online presence. You have a huge online presence on YouTube, on Instagram, on Facebook. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the work that went into building your online presence? Um, so it, it, I mean, it all happened as a big surprise to me. I I, uh, I had Instagram for a little while and I was just like posting pictures of my pets and stuff. Like I didn't really know what it was for. I didn't understand. Um, and then, yeah, I, I uh, ended up borrowing someone's base and just posted something, hashtag base. Okay, hashtag. I didn't really know what that meant. And then, um, yeah, I just did a little, I was like practicing something and then I thought I'll, I'll post something as a little video. And then suddenly like, whoa, I've got like, 200 likes when I normally get two likes <laughs> um, and then yeah I realized that the videos were going really well uh, started just being like okay well I could play other songs I just tried to figure out any riffs that I really like playing that I thought were like really cool bass lines that people might be interested to hear like loud and like out of the mix and they did yeah so like and then I guess like I kept following my kind of niche and the kind of music that I like doing so metal rock punk prog and um yeah a lot of people are also into those kinds of things and they like hearing the bass line really clear um I, i've always liked to do them uh especially before i like to do them as raw as possible i didn't really want to mess around with like getting a interface and recording software and doing them properly they were very like just i feel like doing this bass line let's just do it and record it and yeah does it look all right yeah it looks all right let's post it um, but as time went on, like, and I think the standard of people doing these covers started 
uh, increasing, like, then I felt like I had to up my, my game a bit and uh, start recording things properly, setting up the camera nice, get a light, oh, just... <laughs> It all like kind of snowballed, but you know, it, it was great. And, um, you know, I did spend quite a bit of time like trying to plan what's going to be next. And are there any big dates coming up? Like, okay, it's like 20 years since that album came out. Maybe I should do something from that release or, um, you know, that, that bass player's birthday, let's do a tribute to them. So, you know, there was, um, uh, definitely thought behind it, but when it first started, it was quite an organic thing and it was just like really lucky how it snowballed because really, honestly even though it's just like instagram it has kind of changed my life <laughs> you know like a lot of people are like oh wow you're becky baldwin from from instagram and it's like yeah like because my balance is still like pretty small um but for you know i still managed to get like endorsements which i don't think i would have got otherwise and um yeah, I, I I print T-shirts with my face on it and people want to buy it. It's like incredible. And, you know, and being able to set up a Patreon and uh, people actually want to sign up. It's just like mind blowing that people are that interested in my life, which is otherwise pretty boring. <laughs> it's a blessing. It really is such a blessing. Um, real quick. So we got Hope back in the chat and that's Ellen's dad. Do you know? Oh, cool. Ellen Albertine, yes. yes, I just love yes. her. She's just the sweetest little girl and she loves her bass guitar. Yes, oh yeah, she's awesome. Um, let's see, Kel Moonwater says, Kane loves his BB shirt. So you got all kinds of people wearing your face around the town, Becky. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah, it was during lockdown that I got them made. So um, it was coming back to gigs and there was like people wearing my face and I was like whoa what's that <laughs> I didn't so, think I'd actually have to meet the people with wearing my face it was a bit kind of like Ooh. I mean it was great uh very very much appreciate it thank you for for buying one uh, <laughs> and actually that was a misspelling it is Lane not Kane but apparently his new nickname oh. is now Kane <laughs> oh, yeah. um dude so that's so crazy so, I mean, social media has been such a powerful force in your life that you've been able to like get successful endorsements. You've been able to open up a whole merch shop with just your face. You're giving lessons now worldwide. And it's all because you decided to borrow a base and post a video and yeah. hashtag it, you know, like, damn, that's so cool. And you're such an inspiration. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, no, I, get, I don't know. People are like, oh, yeah, you really inspire me. With that. And I'm just like, I just post about, I, I don't know what I was doing the whole time, the, the whole 10 years before that start, you know, that whole thing started. And then suddenly uh, you talk, start posting about it and people really like it. And, it, and I guess, you know, that that's the cool thing about social media. You don't have to be uh, some big star to really influence people and people to be interested in your life. So uh it can only be a good thing <laughs> yeah go back comment commented power of the hashtags yes absolutely you those hashtags, those hashtags. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well i think it's like a 20 or 30 maximum number on instagram on the hashtags that you can use and i feel like they're very detrimental to people that are like starting off they really need mm. to take full advantage of the hashtags because you might get lucky Yes, yeah. I'm always like, okay, you can get have up to thirty hashtags. So I will use thirty hashtags. I will think of something that is relevant, and yeah, get get into thirty, so one way or another. Although, like, you know, now they've got these like uh, shadow bans on certain hashtags, and um, you, they never tell you like what's a banned hashtag. They just you just post it and then it's like, we're not going to show that to anyone, you know. And then you're like, well, which one is it? What one can I do? I have to remove. <laughs> Yeah, that is crazy. And that is, there's something to be said about the algorithm of the social media, because it can really make or break you depending on, like you said, hashtags or like certain things that you post or the content, this and that. Um, yeah. so really at the mercy of, of like whatever they decide is like cool today or what is like not cool today. <laughs> Yeah, it's like it's like an art that you have to perfect just trying to get around these different social media platforms. Um, so we mentioned briefly that you've gotten endorsements from companies. Can we talk a little bit about your endorsements? Yeah, 
Yeah, so uh, the first one was uh, Diadario. I'm really pleased to be one of theirs because that, that was a company that I'd contacted multiple times. Like when I first started doing loads of gigs, I was like, you know, I I'm gigging loads. Like, come on, give me an endorsement. I mean, because I'm gigging a lot, I'm playing in front of quite a few people, but mostly because I really need strings. Like I'm, I'm really getting through the strings. I don't have the money to replace them. Can I please have an endorsement? And they, you know, they're all just like, oh, no, you know, you're not the right person. Um, but I, I just kind of kept at it. And then, um, you know, the whole Instagram based videos thing started uh, going really well. And then I was like, okay, well, let's try again. And and then they were like, oh wow, yes, we love your profile. <laughs> we love we we love you. We're gonna um, yes, we'd love to have you on board. And then um, you know, since then it's it's been great. Um, so uh, you know, I understand. It's not yes, they kind of just care about numbers, but you understand why. Like it is the best way to get across to an audience because whereas they used to endorse artists based on like the kind of shows they're doing. Um, say if you're watching a band and you know they're playing to loads of people but you, you're not ever able to ever like ask them oh what strings have you got on there mate uh, that never comes comes up whereas if you're following someone on Instagram you can ask them or they'll just post about it and all the information is there the links are there so I understand why um, companies are, find it so important to use um, people with big online followings Sure. Uh, but yeah, once the Didario thing started working, then uh, other companies were starting to get more interested and I started to work with Didario more on their um, workshops and things like that, which have been really cool. Awesome. And then I know you have an endorsement with Alperius Custom Pit Guards. Yes. Do you have uh, your pit guard on that base behind you that we could check out? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um... Yeah, so this was possibly one of the last ones. He actually, no, no, I've had some other ones since then. Um, yeah, so it's uh, kind of mostly black and some little red highlights. Um, and oh yeah, so the, the design is based on my tattoo. So he, I was speaking to Alpa and he was like, what do you want? And I was like, I don't know, just something cool. And then we were trying to figure some a pattern out. And then I, uh, um, he noticed this tattoo uh, that I got a while ago. So it's just like um, cross hash hash like a uh, netting with some swirls, just like tribally swirls. And I was like, "Well, I like this tattoo," and he was like, "Well, I can put that on your base." And then how cool is that? Yeah, so it's like yeah, themed around the tattoo, and then he put on this little uh, uh, BB logo in a base clef, and that sort of became my logo. Like I don't really um, use it that much as a as a logo, uh, but yeah it does kind of work <laughs> and he made and the um yeah the the name plate that says instead of rick and, oops, sorry instead of rick and backer it says rick and becky um uh, yeah it's just perfect isn't it <laughs> i love that that is so awesome yeah i was at this session the other day and um uh, one of the people working there was like why does it say bb on your base what does that mean and i'm like it's my name he's like what <laughs> And I was like, Becky Bolden. And he's like, oh, right. Oh, I was like, ah, oh, okay. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, yeah, it's cool, isn't it? And then he's like, and what does that say? And I'm like, Rick and Becky. And he was like, oh, my God. His mind was like blown. <laughs> he's like, so is this like your own like signature base? And actually someone yet uh, like just this weekend said, oh, oh, I like your, your base. Uh, could you not afford a real Rickenbacker then? Because you've got a Rick and Becky. And I'm like. Uh, it is a real Rickenbacker. I just, um, I just like completely bastardized it. And so many people are just like, oh, what's she done? She's like changed this and changed that. She changed the pickup. Like, no, you have to keep it pure. But um, no, like, <laughs> it's still cool. If you, you can just like make it your own a little bit, you know? Exactly. So my white Rick, I have the pit guard on there and the top of mine says Sunnybacker. And it's the same thing when I post pictures, they're like, is that a knockoff? You know, and I'm like, no, it's the real thing. And we just replace the, you know, the little. Yeah. You're like, yeah, I spent the money. <laughs> it was a lot of money. But... <laughs> and now you don't believe me that it's real. <laughs> um, so Hovick said, BB Queen. <laughs> I love that. Okay. That was clever. <laughs> That was real clever. BB Queen, baby. 
<laughs> um, all right, guys, uh, we are having a great time. We're going to go for about another 10 minutes. So if you guys have any questions, drop them in the comment section. Um, we're having a great time. Thank you all for hanging out with us. Um, so a question that I like to ask all of my guests if you could throw a dinner party for any five musicians, dead or alive, what would the five musicians be and what would you serve them? <laughs> um, okay. Uh, I think I'd like to bring mostly dead people to, to the party. Um, we'll have uh, Lemmy and uh, we'll have Dio We'll have Cliff Burton. Um, we could have Chris Squire as well. Why not? Um, and seeing as they're all dead, who else should we have that's dead? Um... <laughs> oh, okay. Um... Oh, I've gone blank. Who who would you invite to you your dinner? You said Michael Jackson was a. You said Michael Jackson was a huge. You said Michael Jackson was a huge influence. Okay, let's go for that. Michael Jackson as well. Okay, that is a really weird party. Uh <laughs> and what are you what what are you having at your dinner party, girl? Um. Okay. I think I don't know. I think I'd like to keep it simple. Uh. I think we're gonna have vegan burgers. Um. And Jack Daniels. <laughs> I love it. That is perfect. <laughs> Beautiful. I, I, I don't think anybody's ever answered so quickly before. <laughs> <laughs> Jack Daniels and vegan burgers. I love it. <laughs> yeah, we're not here for the food. We're here for the hangs. Absolutely. Awesome. So what's next, Becky? What um what is next on your list of things to do? Um, so the, the tour coming up, so we're touring all around uh, the UK, uh, we're going a bit into Europe as well, and uh, we're just announcing some um, Irish dates as well, so that's going to be cool. Um, and yeah, just keep promoting the, the new album, so the new album is called Born, Born to Sin, and uh, yeah, just hopefully keep pushing that out. I'm going to start working on a new album with Hands Off Gretel pretty soon, so we're going to start demoing some things. Um, hopefully we'll be ready to, I don't know, start gigging and uh, maybe release that like next year or something. Um, but yeah, just get back into gigging really and um, sort my life out a bit. It's <laughs> Everything's just got a bit, um, I don't know, mental, like trying to come back after COVID. Sure. The dog looks so sweet. <laughs> oh, did you just see me? I have my little sweetie pie. This is a tad full miles, Thelonious Monk. And he is a Mexican hairless, so he just has this little mohawk there on top. Say hi to Becky, hi. That is sweet. <laughs> I also have a pig. You said you're an animal lover, so. Oh, uh, yes. I have a 200 pound pig that um, cuddles with me at night. He's a real cuddle pig. Um, and he's my mm. bestest friend. <laughs> um, let's see, Hoback wants to know, any plans? We kind of went over this earlier, but plans to visit the U.S. Maybe the Nam show. Oh yeah, I mean, uh, because like the Nam show has been can like well the the winter one has been cancelled the last like two years I think, isn't it? So uh, definitely due to come back the the next one. I'm I'm hoping if if everything's going to plan, because um, I went to the one in 2020. Yeah, just before uh, everything happened, and uh, it was amazing. I, I was like it was my first time there so I was very nervous and uh but I loved it and that was when like people were starting to talk about this virus and I was just like oh that's interesting because I've just been on a on a flight with like lots of people like traveling internationally <laughs> like, um there <laughs> at the show and I feel pretty ill now <laughs> so but I don't know I don't I don't know if I got COVID but um I don't know. It was just very strange because I, you know, that film Contagion that's about like a big virus. It was uh, on um, the plane that I was on to go to LA. That was the one of the films on the plane, and I watched it, and I, it was like pretty gory considering it was like from a plane. This girl that was like sat next to me <laughs> was like, what? The? She was watching Marley and me, and I was watching this person's like guts, like. <laughs> 
um <laughs> it's all topsy happening and i was just like oh sorry <laughs> anyway yeah and then you first start hearing about this and like you know everyone gets um what do they call it like nam flu or something that you know you just start feeling getting sure. a bit cold and yeah just talking too much and being in air-conditioned buildings and stuff um and you just think oh yeah it's fine you know it's just just like the last pandemic they said was going to like <laughs> kill everyone and and then the, this one actually yeah pretty serious this time <laughs> Oh my god <laughs> but yeah i was staying there with these girls and like um uh sharing a room with uh one yeah we were all kind of just sharing this room and uh the girl that i was sharing a bed with like she she had this cough and she was like coughing in my face all night <laughs> and i was just after after nam and but like i don't know, i felt fine and she was like super ill all the way home <laughs> on the flight <laughs> That is... we're, we're both okay. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Okay. It's all right. Tad. Well, uh, sorry. <laughs> okay. We hear you. We hear you. So Hovek says that Nam is actually uh, in June this year, and Jaybird says we're going to rage so hard at the next Nam show. Laugh out loud. <laughs> So for those that may not know what NAM is, could you like explain it, describe it to describe it in a couple of words? Um, it's like Disneyland for musicians. <laughs> but you get to meet all your all your friends are going as well. So it's like a party and you get to like play with all the toys that you like and um, yeah, check out new things. So it's just like uh, yeah all this all like loads of like celebrities and um you know as aspiring musicians and stuff all come together to try out gear all the uh gear brands are there to show off their new new things to look at um and yeah it's just really cool and then uh we go and look at stuff in the daytime and in the, in the evening we go to the the hotels and we spend too much money on drinks and then uh yeah, we just do loads of networking and stuff. <laughs> so if you guys have not gone to NAM or checked out NAM, it's a whole experience and you must absolutely check it out once in your lifetime because it is phenomenal. Last time I went to NAM, Bootsy Collins actually came floating down to me from the heavens. He was actually coming down an escalator, but it was going so slow. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and it was tripping me out because nobody else was like noticing that Bootsy Collins was like coming down. The I chased him down three flights of stairs before I had enough balls to ask him for his photograph. <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. Yeah, you never know who you're gonna meet there. Like it's yeah you could just like bump into them and they're just looking at some stand like oh yeah this is cool you're like hi <laughs> yeah thundercat was just like walking around like nobody's business it was yeah. absolutely mind-blowing um let me see here i saw oh patrick bolin says becky kicks ass yes you do man thank you thank you very much um we're gonna start wrapping this up you guys thank you all for hanging out with us david dave Mama can too, Hovac. I mean, Don. I mean, we have the whole fan bam in the house. And thank you all for being here. We appreciate it. Becky, we appreciate you. Is there any um thoughts of a solo album at some point in the future? Um oh, no, I don't know. Like for me, it's really hard to prioritize what's going on like if other people need stuff from me i'm like yeah i'll do it right away but if i need to do something for myself i'm like bottom of the list so i don't i can't see that happening it's never going to work my executive dysfunction is just not going to work for that <laughs> so that so that there there's a maybe folks maybe I mean, you know i don't I, it's not that i don't want to do it i just don't think it's going to happen <laughs> <laughs> it, it's going to be one of those like ooh, floating ideas like wouldn't that be cool for uh like until the day i die basically <laughs> and then what else do you do for fun becky besides play bass and be a badass um uh not very much i like just like going out uh going to gigs and stuff so yeah my life is music my downtime is music um if i could just like go out and listen to music every day that that would be that would be perfect do you dream about music 
Uh, yeah, sometimes, sometimes, yeah, yeah. Very <laughs> cool. And then my last question, what is your best piece of advice that you could give the audience? Oh, oh, um, um, uh, just general life advice. Oh, are they musicians? What would you say? Are they mostly musicians in the audience? Well, yeah, let's do some advice for some for the musicians in the house. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, just like meet everybody uh, if you can, like, even if you're not a very, um, I don't know, you don't like meeting people very much, do your best to meet everyone and try and make leave a good impression. Um, because I think so much of the music industry, unfortunately, it's about who you know and if you're a bit shy and and stuff then that kind of sucks but there'll still be people who who like you even if you're a bit like quiet so just yeah try and get yourself out there in any way you can um because there will be people that like you even if you think you're kind of boring some people will still like you it, it's amazing <laughs> <laughs> even if you think you're what, what, weird the weirdos yeah. embrace Especially the weirdos if you're weird yeah <laughs> weird is better <laughs> yeah i think so i absolutely think so um all right girl we're gonna get it wrapped up any last words um um no that's it just um check out the new fury album just look search for uh born to sin and if you see this artwork that looks like a cross between meatloaf and judas priest then you find it um that's <laughs> us go and listen to it <laughs> very cool you guys i will drop all those links in the comment section make sure to go check it out after we are done um until next time you guys make sure to stay kind make sure to stay safe and keep rocking and rolling all right, girl. Thank you so much. I'll talk to you next time. All right. See ya. Thank you so Bye. much. Bye.